stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are taking our first look at A Light in the Fog, the fourth Mythos pack in the Innsmouth Conspiracy Cycle. FFG dropped a preview for the Mythos pack last week, and so we are going to take a look at it uh, today. In part one, we will take a look at the scenario and some of the uh, locations and enemies that were spoiled. And in part two, we will take a look at the player cards. There are spoilers, sir, if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. Special thanks to Laurel Christic, the latest patron to embrace the darkness. Thank you very much, Laurel. I greatly appreciate your support. If you'd like to support the channel's goals, like Laurel and see your name up on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Without further ado, let's get started. A Light in the Fog is the fourth Mythos pack in the Innsmouth Conspiracy Cycle, and it follows hot on the heels of horror in high gear. The investigators arrive at Falcon Point Lighthouse after a frantic car chase, which sees them uh, pursued by agents of the Mythos. Uh, the investigators believe that the uh, Falcon Point Lighthouse may be a uh, base of operations for the Esoteric Order of Dagon, and so uh, we decide to search for clues to the... Uh, mystery that has plagued us since the beginning uh, of the campaign way back in uh, the Innsmouth Con Conspiracy Deluxe expansion. We don't know a whole lot about how this uh, scenario unfolds. It seems uh, quite similar to uh, a, a Devil Reef in which we sort of arrive uh, at the uh, ocean locations and then we uh, delve into the uh, underwater locations connected to those ocean locations. In this one, it seems like we arrive at the lighthouse and then we sort of poke around the lighthouse a little bit and then we head into the tidal tunnels and sunken grottos beneath it. Uh, the locations also seem to be laid out similar to Devil Reef where you have uh, one location uh, and then the other locations connected to them uh, in a row. The locations themselves do not have location markers on them so the arrangement of the locations will be, uh, uh, it would seem, randomly uh, placed in each um, scenario, each time you play this scenario. So uh, that uh, certainly adds to the uh, scenario's replayability. The uh, preview article spoils uh, Agenda 1A and Act 1A of, the, uh, of this scenario, uh, Fog on the Bay and the Lighthouse, uh, respectively. Uh, as it uh, mentions uh, on Agenda 1A, the locations on the same row are connected to one another. That piece of game text is there because uh, the locations themselves do not have uh, location connecting markers on them. So uh, players will be able to move uh, between the locations that are on the same row, uh, probably much like uh, Devil Reef. Now, uh, ad when Agenda 1A advances, it has a forced effect when this agenda advances move all doom on it to the next agenda and it has a doom threshold of four so we know that uh, agenda 2a is already starting with four doom on it hopefully it has a long doom threshold uh, or it could be a very short game indeed act 1a also has uh, an interesting bit of game text uh, it has objective, spend the requisite number of clues before the agenda advances, and uh, you will need three clues per investigator. Now, it's sort of been assumed in the past that you will want to uh, uh, advance the act deck before the agenda advances. I find it kind of interesting that they uh, explicitly state that on the agenda, on the act card, so I'm not too sure whether that will have uh, that has some sort of uh, of effect that uh, we haven't seen before. The investigators will not be able to poke around the lighthouse without some opposition. The uh, FFG's preview article spoiled the keeper of the lighthouse, Oseros Marsh. He uh, is has four fight, six health, and two evade. He's a humanoid, deep one hybrid, and elite. He has the hunter and retaliate keywords. Osiris Marsh gets plus two evade while his location is flooded. He has two forced effects. The first is after Osiris Marsh is successfully evaded, 
For each point you succeed by, take control of one key on him. And the second forced effect is after Osiris Marsh attacks you during the enemy phase. You are captured. Place each of your keys on Osiris Marsh. He's worth two victory points and he will deal one damage and one horror. Well, a four fight, six health hunter and retaliate enemy. That uh, adds up to a very challenging foe indeed. Uh, the nice thing is, is that Aceros' health appears to be capped at six, at least on his uh, on the uh, the enemy card. We don't know whether he will gain additional health as a result of the agenda or act decks, but uh, he is does appear to be capped at six, which will make him much easier to defeat in uh, multiplayer. Uh, it will uh, not take much for a group of investigators to gang up on this guy and uh, beat him down. Six health, though, is uh, pretty uh, beefy in a uh, in solo. That is uh, three charges uh, from uh, from shriveling, or uh, three attacks from uh, most uh, weapons, such as the enchanted blade. So uh, taking this guy down is going to uh, require some work, probably a full turn. Uh, to take this guy down, so uh, he is not uh, somebody to be trifled with. Uh, evading Aceros uh, seems like a better option, of course, uh, unless your uh, location is flooded, in which case his evade value goes up to four. Uh, however, I suspect that uh, most investigators will want to try to uh, to defeat Aceros simply because he has uh, he's worth two victory points, and of course you don't get any victory points if he is evaded. So I suspect most investigators will try to kill this guy, but uh, at six health, that is not going to be uh, a cakewalk by uh, any stretch, especially uh, with four combat and the retaliate keyword. So if you happen to miss with one of your attacks, you're gonna be taking a damage and a horror. Now, the first forced effect, uh, evading Aceros enables you to take control of a key on him. It's unclear from the preview article whether there are any keys on Aceros uh, when he enters play or what happens to those keys uh, should you defeat him uh, in combat. I assume that you would get to take control of any keys on him if you defeat him uh, by killing him, but uh, it doesn't say so explicitly on the card. Uh, again, it doesn't say whether there are any keys on him either, so... Uh, the keys uh, have been uh, our theme uh, through running throughout the Innsmouth Conspiracy, so uh, we will have to wait to find out more uh, how, uh, where we get those keys and whether he starts with any in play. Uh, his second forced effect is after Oceros attacks you, he captures each of your keys, forcing you to uh, get them back from him. Now, given the uh, retaliate keyword and the forced effect, Keeping Aceros uh, exhausted is uh, going to be beneficial so you can prevent him from attacking you and uh, stealing your keys and then uh, forcing you to get them back. Presumably you will need to uh, get the uh, quote-unquote keys to the lighthouse from him. So uh, either evading him to grab that key or defeating him to take the key from him will be uh, the first task that uh, investigators will have to do. And, and if this guy shows up early, I mean, that's gonna be tough. Uh, you're gonna need to be uh, get set up pretty quickly in order to, uh, to face this uh, very difficult enemy. And as we will see, while he is uh, somewhat easier to evade, he does have the hunter keyword and will give chase and uh, as we shall see, there are certain enemies uh, that we will encounter that uh, have the potential to make Aceros quite a bit more dangerous. And uh, so dealing with him at the beginning of the scenario is probably uh, in your best interests. Once the investigators have uh, managed to get into the lighthouse, presumably by uh, capturing the uh, or finding the key to get inside, they will venture into the uh, tidal tunnels and sunken grottos beneath it. FFG's Mythos Pack Preview provides uh, two examples of locations that we uh, will encounter. Uh, you will note that uh, the locations, again, have no uh, location connection markers. So these will be, uh, I guess, placed at random, which will uh, certainly improve the replayability of the scenario and uh, make it uh, difficult for investigators to know which locations they want to go to and which locations they uh, best leave alone. Uh, the first location 
that we see here is the Deep One Nursery. It's a two shroud location with zero clues. The Cave Trait, Deep One Nursery enters play with its flood level increased. So I guess that would mean it enters play partially flooded. So uh, uh, certain Deep Ones are going to be uh, more powerful if they are at the Deep One Nursery. And it has the free triggered ability. If you control the purple key, you can pair the purple key to the oversized eggs littering the flooded chamber and recall something. Read the flashback uh, 13 in the campaign guide. Uh, investigators have been having these flashbacks through uh, most of the scenarios in uh, the Innsmouth Conspiracy. So here's another chance for uh, players to learn a little bit more about uh, the mystery that has been uh, plaguing them since the deluxe expansion. This uh, does mention the purple key. Not sure how many keys will be involved uh, in this scenario, but uh, we know there is uh, probably at least one uh, with Oceros and now uh, the purple key as well. Or maybe Aceros has the purple key, and that's the one we, uh, we need to grab from him. The second uh, location is Sunken Archives, two shroud location with one clue per investigator, cave trait. Sunken Archives enters play with its flood level increased. Clues cannot be discovered at Sunken Archives while it is flooded. Presumably that means uh, it will enter play partially flooded, and then if, it, uh, if the flood level increases again, uh, then you will not be able to gather any more clues here, which uh, could be uh, problematic, especially since it is worth one victory point, and uh, grabbing those victory points is always in the uh, investigator's best interest. And it has the forced effect after Sunken Archives is revealed, place the set-aside black key on it. So we know there are at least two keys, the purple key and the black key, uh, as well as uh, any keys that uh, Aceros might uh, start with. Uh, the... Uh, Having just uh, done the uh, Mythos Pack spoiler for Devil Reef and uh, earning the Waveworn Idol, uh, this uh, gives you a chance to uh, a couple of locations that will give you a chance to trigger that uh, Waveworn Idol should you uh, earn it in Devil Reef, uh, since both of these locations will enter play with their flood level increased. And I am uh, quite certain that the scenario will feature many, many cards that will. Uh, potentially increase the flood level of these uh, of these locations. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the agenda deck itself, uh, the investigators are on a uh, pretty tight timer and uh, they will enter these uh, sunken grottos and uh, they will have a very limited amount of time to grab the keys and clues before the, uh, before the flood level increases and potentially put them in uh, mortal danger. As you would expect, there are many a deep one lurking in these uh, tidal tunnels and sunken grottos. The uh, preview article shows us two of them. The first is the deep one nursemaid. She has three fight, two health, and two evade. Humanoid monster and deep one. Uh, it is aloof and re has the retaliate keyword. While Deep One Nursemaid is unengaged, each other Deep One enemy at its location or connecting location gets plus one fight and plus one evade. And it has the forced effect. After Deep One Nursemaid engages you, draw the top card of the encounter deck. That card loses Surge. It will deal one damage and one horror to you. The Deep One Nursemaid is a, a nasty uh, piece of work. Uh, it enters, it has the aloof keyword, so it enters play uh, unengaged with you, uh, and it will buff all of the other Deep One enemies at the uh, at its location and the connecting location. So if you haven't taken care of Aceros early in the uh, scenario, it is likely that he will follow you down into the tunnels, and suddenly he has five fight and uh, three evade. Five evade if, his, uh, if the flood level has... Uh, uh, has advanced so uh, he becomes a very tough enemy uh, indeed with one of these hanging out uh, we don't know how many copies of the deep one uh, nursemaid are in the uh, encounter deck so potentially there could be two or three of these uh, uh, lurking about uh, buffing all of the other deep ones around uh, which could make uh, it very difficult uh, for investigators to take deep ones down, especially once you get one or two of these things um, buffing each other as well as the other deep ones in the tunnel. Now it has a, uh, I think, a, a terrible forced effect as well. 
that uh, if you engage the, the uh, Deep One Nursemaid, you draw the top card of the encounter deck and that card loses Surge. So it's nice that the card loses Surge, as we'll see in a moment, but uh, uh, I'm drawing extra cards off of the top of the encounter deck is never a good thing. And so uh, if you want to uh, prevent the Deep One Nursemaids from buffing the other Deep Ones around her, uh, then you will need to engage them. And if you do, you'll be drawing more encounter cards. And that is uh, definitely bad news, uh, not only because, A, you could draw another deep one, uh, thus putting yourself into, digging yourself into an even deeper hole, uh, a deep one that will be buffed by the deep one nursemaid. Uh, you could draw, potentially draw treachery cards that will either uh, further buff the, uh, the deep ones or potentially raise the flood level of your location, putting you in uh, dire straits. They, uh, the preview article spoiled one other uh, enemy, and that is the Deep One Hatchling. I get a real Baby Yoda vibe from this card. Uh, I think it's eating an ear, uh, which uh, would be, uh, I think, right up Baby Yoda's alley, since he can't seem to uh, stop putting just about anything he finds uh, in his uh, mouth. Uh, the Deep One Hatchling, uh, only one combat, uh, one fight, one health, and one evade monster Deep One, but it does have the Surge keyword, so if you draw a Deep One Hatchling, you are getting an additional encounter card, which is uh, bad news. You could potentially surge uh, from Deep One Hatchling into Deep One Hatchling into Deep One Hatchling, depending on how many there are in the encounter deck, and suddenly you have a swarm of Deep One Hatchlings on your hands, and uh, that is no good. Throw a Deep One Nursemaid into the mix and you suddenly have a more powerful swarm of Deep One Hatchlings with two fight and two evade to deal with. So that is uh, not, uh, that's even worse. Uh, to add insult to injury, not only does, does the Deep One Hatchling have surge, but it has the forced effect. After you engage Deep One Hatchling, you must either lose one action or, or it attacks you dealing you one horror. Uh, I can't think of a forced effect that is worse than losing one action. Um, man, that is that is tough. Uh, you draw one of these things, it automatically engages you, and now you're down either one action for the remainder of your turn. So you have, uh, uh, you've only got two actions to work with typically or you're going to take a horror, I'd probably end up taking the horror in most circumstances because uh, if you're uh, surging from enemy to enemy to enemy, you're going to need all those actions to kill uh, these Deep One uh, Hatchlings. Uh, again, here's another good use for that Waveworn Idol that uh, I spoiled from Devil Reef. Uh, if a Deep One Hatchling surges, it you can exhaust the uh, Waveworn Idol to give yourself an additional action. So that uh, mitigates the uh, impact of the Deep One Hatchlings somewhat. It's not going to help you if Hatchlings surge into Hatchlings so much, but, uh, but every action counts, and uh, having that Wave Worn Idol on your side could be uh, very useful indeed uh, in this particular scenario. So uh, yeah, a bad choice all round uh, here. You either uh, lose an action or you're going to take a Horror I'm probably taking the horror, but uh, if you are a, a guardian, say, whose uh, job uh, is uh, to, to kill enemies, um, engaging this thing is going to, to ping away at your horror. And uh, guardians don't have a ton, of, uh, a ton of sanity to work with, so uh, this thing, I think, is quite dangerous. Uh, and on top of all of that, it has another forced effect that after you defeat the Deep One Hatchling, you move the nearest ready unengaged Deep One enemy once toward your location. That enemy loses aloof during its movement. So again, the Deep One Hatchling is very easy to kill. Uh, it only has one health and one fight, but uh, once you do, you summon other Deep Ones around you. So say you don't kill Aceros, he's still on the table, you kill the Deep One Hatchling, Aceros will move toward you, uh, potentially attacking you, potentially taking your keys away. Uh, it, it just ends up being a, a huge mess, uh, especially if there happens to be a Deep One Nursemaid on the table. So you kill the Hatchling, Aceros moves in, he's now five fight, uh, 
probably five uh, evade as well and uh, things could uh, spiral downward uh, very quickly uh, if you get the wrong uh, encounter card draws uh, in, while you are exploring these tunnels. Back in the day during the uh, the Dunwich Legacy, there was the uh, Whooper Whirlpool, which would happen if you draw if you happen to draw multiple Whooper Wills. Uh, you could quickly find yourself uh, your investigator would be uh, in very dire straits because they would be taking negative. Uh, negative one to all of their skills, negative two if you had two Whooper Wills, and minus three if you had three. So I could see something, I don't know what the name for a deep one whooper, uh, Whirlpool would be, but uh, uh, you could be in deep, deep trouble if you happen to draw the wrong combination of uh, deep ones. And uh, suddenly you go from having no deep ones to being swarmed by deep ones, and even if you kill those deep ones, you have more deep ones coming to reinforce them. And uh, if you've got a couple deep one nursemaids on the table, all of those deep ones are going to be buffed. So, man, oh man, I am not looking forward to going uh, going beneath the lighthouse in uh, a light in the fog. That is going to be uh, that is going to be very dangerous, particularly for a solo investigator. Uh, because those hatchlings have surge and so uh, uh, a deep one hatchling say surging into a deep one nursemaid uh, you could uh, you could end up uh, having to deal with way more enemies than you are uh, prepared to deal with so uh, yikes yikes uh, deep ones uh, they're gonna they're gonna demand respect. You're gonna definitely need to to respect this scenario, or you could uh, quickly end up uh, going down to defeat and uh, taking a uh, physical trauma. That's gonna do it for my preview of a light in the fog, the fourth mythos pack in the uh, Innsmouth conspiracy cycle. Again, uh, I'm not too sure whether I'm looking forward to this one or not. Uh, the preview suggests there are going to be some very tough enemies to deal with in this uh, scenario between Oseros, who has Hunter and Retaliate, the Deep One Nursemaids, who will be buffing the other Deep Ones, and the Deep One Hatchlings that will be surging into other Deep Ones. Uh, there are going to be uh, plenty of enemies about, so you uh, better be prepared to... Uh, to deal with them once you head into uh, head beneath the lighthouse uh, it is going to be you will be uh, I think you will be battling for your life uh, in uh, in this scenario so uh, pack guns knives whatever weapons you've got because you are going to need them